Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. Are you guys ready to roll? So sorry we're a few minutes late, but I have Melinda and Indy with me today, and uh, we are going to be sharing about how to achieve massive results with media. So for all of you on Facebook, you know the drill. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here in just one second, uh, and then we'll get rolling. Hang tight. Hello and welcome back to Lead Up for Women, Speak Up to Lead Up. I am your host, Colleen Biggs, and I am so excited to be with you guys today because we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects that I would say is an area that I struggle a little bit in. You know, I think we all have questions on what is the best media to use? How do we build our media presence? Uh, we all have questions on how to be seen. We know how to show up. But once we show up, how do we get seen once we show up? So I'm really excited to talk to our two guests that we have today. But before we get to our two guests, I want to just get caught up real quick with Lead Up and let you know we've had massive success with our Lunch and Learns. And all the ladies that have showed up every time, every month, have had the opportunity to network with other ladies, have their lunch, learn a, a little bit about what's going on in Lead Up for Women, as well as I teach on a specific subject every month. So it's been great to be able to have that uh, every month. And I definitely want to invite all of you. It is in the description. Uh, so you can just click on that link and attend those lunch and learns. We also do our Teaching Tuesday webinars on the Tuesday. That's the second and the fourth Thursday of every month. Those are our members. They come forward. They teach their genius to you. They offer uh, free offers. They offer the opportunity for you to work with them. If you're wanting to be educated, inspired, and motivated, this is where you want to be. And we do that the second and fourth Tuesday. Those are free. So definitely register for those and show up. And for our members, it's a chance for them to expand their circle of influence and share their genius with us. So it's a win-win for them to stop and uh, step in the spotlight. And I'm excited because I wanted to update you that our September, October issue of the magazine is at print and we are going to be having that available later this week. So all of you will have access to that digital magazine right away. And then of course our members will be getting that in the mail uh, shortly. So excited for the next, um, next magazine that we have coming. All right, let's just go ahead and jump into today because I'm super excited to introduce introduce our guest. So our first guest that we have with us today is Indy Rossi. I met Indy quite some time ago. Many of you might remember, um, I've had her on some Facebook Lives. She's taught us some tips and tricks on how to grow your Instagram channel, uh, how to grow your YouTube channel. She became an influencer, feels like overnight, uh, but it's very impressive in what she's been able to do in eight months. So Indy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Colleen. I appreciate that. Yeah, super great to have you here. So, Indy, I know that you did not become this influencer and this sensation overnight where you're having to answer thousands of messages every day from your raving fans. You had a plan, but that plan didn't start when you were like eight years old or whatever it may be. So talk to me a little bit about how you came up with this idea. What was going on in your life where you decided... Um, this isn't the life that I want to create for myself, even though I know you're really young and this is, I, I admire it because I wasn't creating that life at, at your, your age. I was popping out babies and <laughs> doing the thing that I do as a mother, uh, cause I started at 19. So tell me what, you know, tell and share with our, our listeners, what was it that influenced you? What was going on in your life? What was a pivotal moment for you? Yeah. Okay. So I guess I can start out with the fact that when I was really little, like seven years old, I wanted to be an actor. And it was a dream that I had just in the back of my mind for so long. And at the time, as I grew up, it was, I had that feeling that only certain people can do these things. And I'm just not that kind of person. So it's just a pipe dream. And so last year I graduated college in 2018 and I kind of was just moving listlessly through life. And I ended up out here in Arizona, had followed my ex-boyfriend out here and was staying with his family. I was working as a waitress and I hate waitressing. It's probably one of the most tedious and difficult jobs I can imagine, but that's just me. And I was thinking to myself, this isn't really where I expected or hoped that I would be at 23 years old. You know, I thought I would do better than this. And there was a kind of a turning point where 
I ended up leaving my ex and was homeless in Mesa, Arizona for like a week and met some other people, my current fiance, and he really helped me out of the situation. And we, we started to work together on just getting me to a better place, which was so selfless of him. But in January, we ended up deciding to start a YouTube channel. And my thought was that I should build an audience. I don't know how or how long it's going to take or what I'm going to do, but I want to build an audience because I want people to know who I am. And now here we are in October, like what, nine months later, 10 months later, and I've got 250,000 people across the world who know who I am since January. And it's been really helpful for my work toward becoming an actor. So that's actually starting to happen. And it's just been a crazy year for me. So that's kind of a little bit of my backstory. I want everyone to let that kind of sink in for just a second, because when you kind of put the right combination together, it works, right? But Indy had a plan. Her plan was, I want to build an audience. She wanted to have an audience because her plan for what she wants to do in her life is to be an actress. So from building this audience, she's attracted producers that have contacted her and she's actually done some films that are going to be coming out on Amazon. But I, I really want to anchor in the point that if you have a vision and it's something you want to go after, whether you believe this or not, we create exactly what is around us today. We have all created the reality that we live in. And if you don't like your reality, change it, create something different. So Indy didn't like the opportunity that she had as working as a waitress where some people might've been just fine with that at 23 years old. Um, she wanted to create a different future for herself and is learning and growing through that. So talk to us, Indy, about First of all, you made the choice, you started doing it. What did it take? You know, you don't really need to get into technical aspects, but are there some steps that we could offer the audience of how do you become a YouTube personality or influencer? Yeah, so it's actually not as complicated as people might think. And there's a myth that says it takes years and years to grow on YouTube, and that's just not true. It takes two things. You have to pick good topics that suit the size of your channel when you're starting out. So when you're just starting, you really can't rank for really popular topics. You have to niche down and cover things that not a lot of people might be searching for. But that means that when you do make those videos, the people who are searching can find you and then you grow from there. The second thing is that your content has to be engaging and it has to have something behind it that makes people feel something or want to do something whether it's comment or like or share. Engaging content is the most important thing if you wanna build on YouTube. And it's the same with Instagram. That's how I managed to generate the 50,000 followers that I have in the same amount of time and the 15% engagement rate. It's just, and for me, I didn't know that at the time, but what I ended up doing was just making content around who I really am and what I really like to do. And didn't try to hide anything or change anything. And, People like that. People resonated with it. So that's my advice for you. That's a great point. So listeners, let's go back and talk about that for a minute. How many of us, you guys can, while you're driving, listening to this, laying in bed in the evening, whatever, think to yourself, how many times have I tried to create the perfect video? Or how many times did I not go on video because I didn't look perfect, right? Here's the thing. People that become viral on YouTube, become viral on any media outlet, is all about controversy or something that they do to stand out, right? It's about them being unique in what it is that they do because we're created with skill sets and we have specific geniuses that are just for us. So being yourself and really just showing who you are and being yourself on camera, like Indy just discussed, that's what created her uniqueness that gave her audience the opportunity to be kind of thrilled by what she was doing and want to follow her, that's the key, right? So if it's a one and done, there's no reason for anyone to follow you. But if there's something that's come, getting them to come back and you're asking them, like you said, to take action over and over again, that's how you can build that channel. So let's switch quickly over to how you keep those subscribers on YouTube. And then we'll talk a little bit about Instagram. So how do you, how do you, this has probably gotta be hard, 
deal with so many subscribers because <laughs> that's got to be exhausting to have so many messages and comments. And are you returning all those messages? Are you engaging with your audience? What are you doing once you get the subscribers? Yeah, fortunately, I've had a lot of help from Andre, my fiance. He's been really by my side through this whole thing. And I suggest that if you are looking to build a big audience, you have someone else who can help you, whether they're just supporting you by, you know, being the shoulder you can cry on when you read a comment that's really negative, or if they actually are helping you with your channel, it's important to have someone you can work with. That's not necessary, but I found that I don't know if I could have been able to build what I have now without someone else there for me. But aside from that, yeah, a lot of engagement comes from engaging your audience by actually engaging with them, commenting in response, sending messages to them, liking their messages, et cetera, et cetera. It's essential if you want to build the audience that I have. And that's why my engagement rate, again, is so big on Instagram. I, I actually spent so much time liking and responding to almost every single comment I received. And I was getting thousands and thousands of comments. And it took a lot of time, but it built a lot of loyalty. And that's my advice. It's just, you've got to put in the work and the time. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's talk about how you do that. So how did you build uh, an Instagram channel to 50,000 followers in less than, you know, it takes people years to do that. Uh, how, how were you able to do that? What was your tactics? Like maybe just a couple of things that our listeners can apply now to their, their Instagram um, accounts that they have. Yeah, I would say it came from having a better hashtag strategy than just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. <laughs> so I learned a, a specific strategy that I could explain if anyone wants to know. I can't get into it here. It takes a little bit of time. But aside from that, I took a lot of photos of myself just doing random stuff, like really giving people a, some insight, some vision into me as I am as a normal person, whether I'm like washing dishes or reading a book there's a whole thing that, and I don't know why I did that, why it inspired me to do that, but I think it was just easy and it really is easy to be yourself. So if you look at my Instagram, it's a lot of pictures of me just doing stuff, you know, hanging out and people resonate with that. Isn't that interesting how other humans want to follow what's happening in your daily lives? If you think about uh, reality TV all of the big, the big, t you know, TV um, series that are reality TV. It's just them in their daily lives. And yet we try to work so hard to make it so hard to become an influencer and create content when really it's just about being you. And we all try to find um, hardship within that. Like, it is just as easy as getting on camera and just getting out there and saying, hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. And by the way, behind the scenes, I'm also this grandma running around getting thrown up on, you know, the kids are screaming with their heads in the back. Like all this kind of stuff happens right in my house right now with what's happening in my life. It's just as easy to video that and run around with it. And then people get interested in that. Then they see the next day what you're doing and the next day what you're doing. So I'm assuming there's some consistency piece to this indie on how you build it. You can't just show up once and think you can build it to 250,000 subscribers, right? There's got to be some commitment and some consistency in this. That's right. Yeah. When I started, we were posting three or four videos every single day of the week. So 21 videos a day or not a day, but rather a week. So it took a lot of time and people began to expect that level of I don't know, content from me. And it, we had to wean them off a little bit, which kind of hurt, but we were there every single day doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So yeah. I would say even if baby steps, right? If someone wants to start to get a channel going and being an influencer first, we're going to give you Indy's information now. So you can reach out to her. Absolutely. That's going to be number one. But second, it's like, you just have to get started, right? You just have to take that step. So you just have to go create an account and then uh, you have to create a video and then be consistent with it and give, give content that's interesting. You know, the cats go viral chasing lasers. 
it, again, it's not, it doesn't have to be something that you are just, you know, creating this massive content because you think, you know, that's what people are looking for. Sometimes you get too much and then people lose you. They don't, they're not really, they're not getting the tangible pieces of like, just tell me what I need to know. I'll give you an example. When I go online, everyone does this. I don't think I'm the only one. I Google how to do something, how to do X, Y, Z. I was looking on how to cut crown molding. All the videos came up on YouTube. I went to the YouTube. I would listen. If they just kept talking, I was out. Listen, I'll just tell me how to cut it. I asked how to cut it. I went to the next video. They're like, here you go. This is what you do. Tape this, do this, measure this. I was like, step by step by step. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it out. 10 minutes later. So I just, if from my own testimony of that, everyone make it simple. If you're telling someone how to do something, give them the steps and get out, get in and get out. Just tell them how to do it. Tell them how to apply it then get them onto the next step. Right. Yep. Yeah. Now on, on Instagram, it's, you said hashtags is a big thing. Uh, did you reach out to other people like other uh, followers? Did you reach out to people that you uh, wanted to follow you, start commenting on their things, and then they start following you? Is that a trick that we, it is a secret? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a secret. Actually, that takes way too much time, and it's not very oh. effective, but it depends on your goals. You know, if there's a certain person that you really want to follow you, then yeah, I would do that, but if you're looking for the numbers, what I did, and this ended up working out so well, there's this website called influence.co that has a really cool advanced search feature where you can find people, other influencers who have the same audience that you do. So my audience is mostly located in India. And in fact, if you grow a YouTube channel these days, most of your audience is going to be from India because they have the largest number of users, but that's a different topic. Yeah. So what I did was I found influencers with roughly the same size audience. I asked them if they wanted to do a free promote for promote, just you share me, I'll share you. And I ended up picking up thousands and thousands of followers in a week from doing that a couple of times. So wow. now that's yeah. a good tip right there. You guys make sure you're yeah. writing that down. Okay, Indy. So now that we've excited everyone about how they can become an influencer and why is being an influencer important? Let's just, at, let's just answer that question. Why would anyone want to grow their Instagram account? Why would anyone want to grow their YouTube account? What is the purpose of it? And what, what is the, the benefit? I'd say there's a lot of different reasons. Um, it comes down to what you want to do. A lot of people have a message or something that they want to share with more people. And, and social media is such a blessing because it makes it so easy to do that. But if you don't necessarily have that, and maybe you're an artist and you just want more people to see what you have, that's another reason to do the same thing. Or for me, I wanted to build an audience to share my personality and my, my stuff, my interests with people. And that worked out for me. There's so many yeah. different reasons and social media is the driving force behind all of it. I hear, I hear the, the question all the time. How do I make more money? How do I be seen? How do I get more clients? Oh, that is probably the top three questions that I get. Well, if you want to build an audience, you've got to go somewhere you're not. If you're not on YouTube, go build an audience on YouTube. They will believe you. They will trust you. They will want to follow you. And then when they do that, and then they find out you have other products, and then you've already been teaching them all these tangible things they can apply in their lives, why wouldn't they want to work with you? It's a great way to get clients. And by the way, Indy makes money off of her, all of her subscribers and and by, by advertisements in YouTube. So she's also making a passive income just because she's built this huge following. So it's another way to build thousands of dollars of passive income and get those people and those subscribers and that audience to work with you directly or join your community or join a program that you have or buy a book that maybe you've written. Yeah. So, so many reasons on why it's important. So Indy, how can someone reach you? Uh, best way to reach me is probably through email. That's IndyRossiOfficial at gmail.com. Also, uh, you can follow me on Instagram, but I probably won't see your DMs. I get a lot of those. <laughs> follow her on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> follow her on YouTube. Everyone listening right now, we're going to have all the links after this. Uh, for any of you listening on the podcast right now, the links are available at your fingertips. All you have to do is click on the link. And it will be available to you as well as uh, we're going to have all the information on our Facebook. If you're listening and say, hey, what do you, they have a Facebook page? Yeah, just go to Lead Up for Women. In fact, 
Go follow us at Lead Up For Women everywhere. And you're probably going to see Indy everywhere in Lead Up For Women because why? She keeps showing up. Why does she keep showing up? Because she built a following on YouTube. She built a following on Instagram. She knows how important it is to keep stepping in the spotlight to stay top of mind. And that's why she keeps showing up. So you're going to see her everywhere in Lead Up For Women. Congratulations, Indy. Huge accomplishment for your age. I'm blown away blown away. I, I mean, I didn't accomplish that at that age. I don't even, my, some of my kids are older than that and haven't accomplished this success that you've done. It's really impressive. And you should be so proud of yourself yeah, and where you've gotten. You. I'm doing yeah. my best. Thanks, Colleen. Absolutely. Thank you for being with us today. You're, you're super impressive and admired by many. So thank you for what, what you offered today. All right, we're going to talk to Melinda Whitstock now. I'm super excited you're here. And I want to tell you a little bit about her because Melinda and I don't know each other personally, but she's a five-time serial entrepreneur who's built four businesses in media and tech to seven and eight-figure successes. Impressive, ladies and gentlemen, impressive. She is the CEO and founder of, no, I'm not going to say this, Potapolo. 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 I want to know about this because I'm a podcaster, so I'm going to learn about it today. It's the world's first socially interactive and gamified podcast network where people gather to discover their favorite podcasts, connect with hosts and each other, and win rewards as they put lessons learned into action to enhance their lives and engage in world-changing initiatives. Duh. Why? I mean, come on. Like, why wasn't this thought of forever ago? Like, uh... Melinda, this is amazing. Seriously. Well, thank you so much, Colleen. I, and, and thank you for having me on. I, and, and Indy, I, I just want to send congratulations to you because it is really impressive. And I'm going to hook you up with my daughter, who's a singer songwriter. I think she needs your help, but um, on all of that to get her audience built. Um, but thank you, Colleen. Yeah. I mean, I think every single one of my businesses um, really has been my lab for this in many ways. I've always mm -hmm. believed that the best content is conversation. And mm -hmm. India's testament to that as well. It's one of the things that makes her YouTube and her Instagram so good. So if you apply that to podcasting, all the people who are listening right now are probably having all kinds of ideas and all kinds of questions and thoughts. And, and they want to know other people who share the same interests. And they want to be talking about the podcast as they're listening. And if they've learned something on a podcast, uh, to actually put it into action right away to have that transformation in their life. Mm -hmm. So I'm a podcaster, but I go back a bit too, because I'm also a recovering journalist. So at <laughs> age, age 22, uh, there should be like an AA for that. Anyway, um, age 22, I was a correspondent on the times of London and I wrote about uh, business initially and then the media. And I interviewed all sorts of major media and business like titans of industry, everyone from like Richard Branson to Ted Turner who founded CNN through to Steve Jobs. And I learned a lot about how they did business. And then I went on to write about the media and there was this new thing called the internet you know, that Rupert mm -hmm. Murdoch personally told me I should stop writing about because it wasn't really going to amount to anything, you know, and <laughs> I mm -hmm. persevered um, and uh, and then went into television and and created show hosted shows and created shows for the BBC, grew those audiences to 20 million and beyond. Right. So along the way, before I became an entrepreneur, I already had a grounding and kind of what works in terms of content. Mm -hmm. and how to engage people and how to grow audience. And so the rules don't really change. There are different platforms in which you can do this, but the rules are always the same. Number one, like authenticity, and Indy was talking about that, uh, really authenticity. Uh, Colleen, you also mentioned being useful, having content that's actually <laughs> relevant to people, right? All these sorts of things. Um, and engaging content that involves people in a community. So that's really what Podopolo is really grounded on on all of those things. Um, so it's an app, it's a social podcast player on both app stores. Um, uh, we just have a new release coming out in the next couple of days that we're waiting for anxiously because it's really exciting. It has really enhanced social sharing functionality and all this kind of cool stuff in it, right? Um, 
but it is a place where podcasters can actually get to know who's actually listening to their podcast, who's actually in their community. Because right now, all you can do is like look at your download numbers, but it doesn't really tell you who's listening. Mm -hmm. You can send them over to Facebook, which is fine, but Facebook is monetizing your audience, not you. Mm -hmm. And so on Podopolo, we are uniquely the only people to actually share the data with podcasters so they can actually know who's in their community as they grow their community. They can know what interests those people have, like where they're located, what they want to know about, what's, what's interesting to them, what they want to learn. And they can also engage them in the actual uh, con contribution to the content, to the podcast content as well. And so this is really game changing. It allows... Uh, podcasters to actually make money from podcasting too, because we also place ads for them because we have the data, we can take the guesswork out of that. Um, and they can also take advantage of our paywall. So this is important because 85% of podcasters don't make any money from podcasting. Mm -hmm. And that offends me. <laughs> There's so much great content out there. And, and, and it's this digital media that's been approached as if it was a broadcast media. It's not, it's digital. So you can do really uh, like hyper laser kind of targeting and real engagement that speaks to what people really want. So then we sweeten the deal for the listeners and the viewers because it's video enabled as well. So as they do things, as they engage and share and put lessons learned into action and do all this kind of stuff, they actually unlock some virtual rewards, recognition, but also cool products, discounts, freebies, all of that. So anyway, it's a mouthful, but that's how I came to launch mm -hmm. Podopolo. Yeah, I love that. And I, I feel like, you know, it's such a wonderful resource for not only those that are listeners, but for the host as well. Um, and you're right. You know, why should, why should a host be um, running a podcast unless, you know, unless it, there's a, a different way that they're monetizing the podcast through the group, right, that they have. It's some other way that they're monetizing on that. But I, I love it that it's really kind of the first shared revenue for podcasters mm -hmm. and bringing them together and it being being an app. So talk about, um, talk a little bit more about how would somebody, um, if, if, do they need to have a certain amount of downloads? Um, mm -hmm. How would a, they just download the app and then it walks them through how to, mm -hmm. what to do if they're a listener, if they're a podcaster, how does it work? Yeah. Okay. So for a listener, just download the app. It's in both app stores and mm -hmm. start engaging, find your favorite podcast and join um, and start contributing and, and all of that. If you're a podcaster, basically go to podopolo.com, sign up for the demo and you get to talk to me. Um, we optimize every podcaster has their own branded channel and their own branded group. And we have different levels of customization. Um, and so podcasters come in that way. That is all going to change in early January, where at that time we will have what is known as our ingestion engine. So every podcaster, every podcast that exists will automatically be on our app. And at that point, it's about deciding whether you want to upgrade into all these different customizational, you know, customizable features mm -hmm. and get access to your data and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So let's go back a little bit, Melinda. So this is what you're doing today because we got mm -hmm. right into Podopolo and what you're doing now. Yeah. But let's go back uh, because you, you said you're a recovering journalist. <laughs> you know, you've done a lot in life and Give us a little glimpse into, um, you know, you do meditation. I have written here in front of me. You do visual visualization, gratitude, intention setting. You know, these are things that we've talked about a lot on the show um, that are traits of those that are successful in their lives. And success in your life is really about creating the life that you desire to create, mm -hmm. not by anybody else's measure, mm -hmm. but what your measure is, of what success is yeah. to you in your life, right? And so if people want to travel or have more time with their family or whatever it is that they want to do, that's the life that they want to create. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about your journey and were there, were there pivots or times within your career, uh, since you're recovering, especially <laughs> that you had, that you had decided, you know, Hey, I, th I thought this was going to be my life, but it's not what, you know, what were some things that happened that, that, that kept kind of pivoting you to the point where you've gotten to today? Well, I believe, first of all, that life is a journey and it's not a destination. And so you can have lots of goals, but if you're not enjoying what your day-to-day, your -day, 
I mean, what's the point of that? I mean, uh, being an entrepreneur brings with it so many rewards of the sort of flexibility and the ability to be yourself and all of that. But it also brings with it many, many challenges and learnings that often come in the form, especially if you're an innovative entrepreneur, if you're creating something out of whole cloth that like you're an inventor in, in essence, um, and you're trying to figure out, you know, find your market for a product, you're inventing new technology, like a lot of my businesses have been, there are so many failures <laughs> um, that, that come along the way. So it is, it is a constant up and down. And I think the real thing where entrepreneurship has, um, I don't know, it's been almost a spirit, it's become a spiritual journey for me. And it wasn't always that. It was because I began to realize that those failures were actually the moments in my life where that's where the growth was. That's where I learned. And it was how I reacted to that. It was how I came to terms with knowing that there are a lot of things as an entrepreneur that are beyond your control. Um, it's not personal. Um um, and to take every moment where you're challenged or triggered or like, oh my God, I don't have any money in the bank or like any of those kind of moments um, really is like, what's that showing me about me and what I need to learn or what I need to clear? Like what limiting beliefs or things do I need to clear to be able to get to where I really want to be and just be my authentic self and be in alignment with my, my, my purpose here, why I'm here in this particular moment in time in an earth suit. I mean, what, what is the gift? What is the, that I have? What is the value that I can bring to other people? So I, I wish I could say that, say at um, Indy's age, I was this um, spiritual or enlightened. Um, it, it, it really is a life journey. And so uh, probably about 10 years ago, uh, I really began, began meditating. I was kind of led into it because I was a big hot yoga person. And um, I, my mind was always so active. And I was like many women on this constant to-do treadmill. And my work was never done. And I just felt like I was burning out. And it's like, wait a minute, that's not the way to be. I, I don't really, I'm not enjoying my life. So like, didn't matter how many zeros, how, how much money I made or what success I had or anything like that. If you're not happy or if it's starting to threaten your health, it's not good, right? So it was a real wake-up call in terms of what I wanted my life to actually be. And from there, it's really been a journey that's just gone deeper and deeper and deeper. So instead, like for instance, instead of a to-do list, I now have an inspirations list and I just act on the downloads that come to me in my meditation. And when I do that, the right people show up at the right time. Uh, um, ideas present when I act on them, they're, they work. I mean, uh, and I find that I don't really get triggered by things. Like things don't really freak me out. Like if something goes wrong, it's like, oh, okay. Well, that's part of the process. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's very different, um, but it is a journey. And, I, and, and it's, it's not, I don't know whether it's a place that, I mean, I wish I could have gotten here much earlier, much younger. <laughs> But, but all in the right time. Yeah. But, but, uh, you know, and one of the things that comes up all the time on my own podcast, Wings of Inspired Business, where I interview all these high performing female entrepreneurs, you know, with seven and eight, nine figure businesses, in some cases, unicorns, as if all entrepreneurship has also taught them this kind of uh, mindful, heartful, spiritual journey. And the more that you get into that, the more you're actually going to succeed in business. And it's mm -hmm. like, almost like, uh, there's, there's a, it, it's, it's almost predictable now in terms of the data of just sort of the numbers, thousands of women that I've interviewed. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have to uh, find out how I can get on your podcast. I oh, you must come on my podcast. Yes. And Indy, you're, you're welcome on my podcast too. We can get like really geek out on like, you know, go for a good <laughs> 45 minutes into all of that. And of course, Colleen, yeah, open invitation. Yeah, would love to, Melinda. Thank you. I, I, I really love what, what you had shared, what with, you know, we're so in our minds all the time. And as women, we feel like there's just, we just have to do all this stuff. <laughs> I know. I'm not kidding. And, yeah, you it's know, true. and when, you know, seven kids, 11 grandkids later, uh, two divorces. Yeah. So we're here now today and I have a lot of wisdom and I look back at the younger Colleen and I literally laugh. I do. You know, <laughs> I, I look back and I'm like, so but you didn't know, you didn't even know back then. But yeah. I could, I wouldn't have even known the person that I would have become today 
And a lot of what we learn is through wisdom. So just, you know, educating yourself and really listening to those that have been through uh, the trenches already. That's why I call, you know, we call this organization Lead Up. Um, it's lead up and leave the ladder down, you know, how can we teach others what we've already been through? How can we inspire them and help them get through their businesses and their lives and navigate those, those treacherous uh, paths that we've taken, you know, and, and uh, how, how are we able to assist them? Now, wisdom, it's something you can't buy, you know, it's, it's something that comes with life and the failures are where the, the learning is. It's where the growth Absolutely. is. I, like I to, don't I, call them failures. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they're everywhere. I, so I like know? to say that, that when the lesson is learned, the experience is no longer necessary. Mm -hmm. Meaning that yeah. if you have something going on in your life right now that you don't much like, right? What is it? that, you know, what is it that you need to change? And so much change is internal, mm -hmm. you know, when you start to, and we, we're all like from like zero to seven years of age, like we're all filled with all these beliefs that we invent about ourselves from our experience um, without a frontal lobe, because it hasn't been developed yet. And we carry all that baggage around with us subconsciously. So it's almost like you know, the world is being, you know, run by, you know, very small children in the most case, right? <laughs> so, so, so the more you start to, to recognize that, and, and when you take those kind of failures or challenges or triggers or whatever, as an opportunity that you can be grateful for, it's like, wow, okay, I'm being shown something here that I can like kind of retire this belief or this behavior or whatever. Um, it's an opportunity. And, and when you get into that kind of gratitude, it's almost like your brain rewires like it, it, it's it's not anything that's gonna you're not in fear or like scarcity anymore or, or yeah. any of that um yeah. it, it but it really is a profound shift yeah it is so good good nuggets to take away um from lessons learned today you know really shift and stay in gratitude uh mm. and it's really you know your mind struggles with being in scarcity or fear when you're in the middle of being in gratitude your mind really can't focus on both of those at the same time. <laughs> so if you're focusing on gratitude, that's what you're getting. And I always recommend, and I'll recommend again today, that every morning when you wake up, you write 10 things you're grateful for. Mm. Start your day in gratitude, just 10 things. It could be breathing, it could be birds. I'm thankful I have hummingbirds in my backyard all day long. I'm thankful that I have a great husband. I'm thankful that I have freedom of my time, freedom of my choices. It could be, I'm, I'm grateful I have time to sit and write 10 gratitudes. <laughs> you know, whatever that is for you, Take the time to write it. It'll mm -hmm. change your day. It'll change your day. So, wow, you guys, we have learned so much. Melinda, I can't even thank you enough. Let's talk about how someone can reach out to you. You talked about padopolo.com. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we have that information listed already. Um, and the app for those, mm -hmm, uh, for mm -hmm. those listeners that want to download the app. Um, is there any other way that they would uh, reach out to you or is that really? Uh, of course. Yeah. And promote? so you can also, you can also find me and my podcast wings of inspired business on Melinda mm. Yes. Um, and I'm ubiquitous on social media. So Melinda Whitstock 2020 on Instagram and also Podopolo on Instagram as well, of course. And uh, Facebook, Melinda Whitstock, LinkedIn, Melinda Whitstock, yada, yada. So everywhere Melinda Woodstock. <laughs> yeah, or Podopolo. <laughs> or yeah. Podopolo. That's great, Melinda. <laughs> Thank you for bringing your years of wisdom to us today. And, uh, and, uh, and it's lovely to hear that your daughter's a singer and songwriter. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. She goes she goes by Sydney Witt. And during coronavirus, it's an amazing story because she's self-taught. She's wow. written a whole album, produced the whole album, sings like she's really good. So she's got three singles out so far. Uh, you can find her at Sydney Witt. So W-I-T-T. -T. She took off the stock of the name. So Sydney Witt's easier to remember. Oh, anyway, and so Sydney Witt com and and she's got a really cool political song right now um called mr president which is very appropriate she's got another song called 17 about turning 17 in quarantine and that's when her whole music career began and another one called intrusive and she's got a new one coming out on november 11th called tell me which i think is one of her really great ones and her album comes out early next year so she's just on a tear like she's got a whole yeah. new album she's already written and and very but here's the fun. thing Here's the thing. What's so funny is I've noticed with so 
many women and something you said at the beginning of this whole interview, Colleen, that women um, sometimes are afraid to step in the light and then like they, right. And I've just noticed in my daughter, she's very shy. She's like incredibly talented, but she doesn't know really what to do on like social media and like all this sort of stuff. So, so India, I need to definitely introduce her to you because she's got to build an audience. You can have amazing music, but if nobody knows you, <laughs> it's like- we talk about that all the time. You could be the best pizza place in town, but if no one knows you, you're the bankrupt pizza place. Yeah. And the, the irony of course is like, you know, uh, social media, you know, I've had all these like social media companies and all this kind of stuff, but like it, when it's mom trying to tell <laughs> daughter to, it needs to be from somebody cooler yeah. than me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Is that amazing? Too. She'll take advice from other people, but not. From oh, totally. Me. Until, yeah. until <laughs> she has her own family and her own children. And then exactly. life completely changes. And I never say I told you so, but then they come back and they're like, wow, I had no yeah. idea. You're like, hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yep. it's so true. It really mm -hmm. is. And and, it is. and and it's funny, like, because you've got seven kids. I, I have mm -hmm. the two. Well, I guess my dog counts. So three. Dog counts dog counts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, someone will say something to them that you've been saying forever and then they get it when the other person, they go, Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I get it. Trust me. I get it. I just, I don't even fight it anymore. I get it. <laughs> all right. Well, ladies, thank you so much for being with me today. I want to remind all of our listeners that we're moving our podcast next week for live on Facebook. So if you want to join us, it'll be on Monday the 19th, but we'll still, you know, uh, update on Friday, just as we always do. Uh, but our guest for next week, Jennifer uh, Vladerick is our uh, cover of our magazine coming up. She has an amazing story of being a cancer survivor. She was overweight, she lost weight. And not only did she do that, she runs triathlons. She is a true inspiration. You are gonna be amazed at reading her story and we get to meet her uh, next week on our podcast. We also have Suzanne Poole from the UK, one of my favorite members that we have. Uh, she has, she's an author, she's a coach, but you know, she says you can be, um, if you're not, if you're not knocking your headboard, if you're not knocking your head against the headboard, then you're not crushing it in, in, um, uh, business. So she talks about how our personal lives and our relationships and explosive opportunities we have in our relationships and women being women and how if we're not exploring that and we're not really being truthful to ourselves in those areas we're blocking ourselves from success in other places of our lives not a lot of women come out and just talk that openly about sex so i love it that she is free to feel to talk about that and she does it in a in a really classy way and I love her so much for that. And, uh, and she's changed her life. She also has had a huge weight loss journey. She's ran every day um, for the last 90 days in the rain, in the cold, no matter what. And so these are two very inspirational women uh, that, are, that are sure to inspire all of you. So don't forget to join us next week. And the last words we have today is, remember, you are the only you that has ever been. And you are the only you that will ever be. So how you pioneer your future is up to you. You are the one with the key and you are the one that can take the path. So be you and be strong and we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful week, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.